Today I'm going to be taking my previous desktop case design and adapting it to accommodate an SSD underneath the PAR. The case uses the same Raspberry Pi and Ice Tower combination that I've used in the last version, but this time I'm going to add a Geekworm MSATA SSD hat and a 120GB SSD. I'm going to be using an 8GB Raspberry Pi 4B, but you can use a 2 or 4GB version as well as they're identical in their layout. I've chosen an MSATA Shield and Drive as these are typically a bit cheaper than an NVMe drive and you don't really get much benefit from using an NVMe drive as you're limited by the maximum speed of the USB 3 port in any case. This is version 2 of this Shield and it supports UASB and up to a 2TB drive. Cooling will be provided by the ice tower which sits on top of the CPU and we're going to move the fan off this heatsink and onto the side of the case. It'll be positioned so that it pulls air from the outside of the case and blows it across the heatsink and out vents on the other side. Let's start off by assembling the pie stack. First we need to mount the legs onto our ice tower. Next let's remove the fan from the tower so that we can mount it onto the side of our case. The ice tower and SSD shield both come with some screws and standoffs. We're going to use the four female standoffs and four black screws from the SSD shield, leaving the longer screws and male to female standoffs behind. We're also going to use eight brass standoffs from the ice tower and four silver screws to secure it. We won't be using the four nuts or the spare screw and standoff. The female standoffs go on the USB port side of the shield and are each held in place with a standoff on the opposite side. The Pi is then held on top with the second set of standoffs. We can now add the ice tower to the Pi. Remember to first add the thermal pad on top of the CPU. The four silver screws hold the ice tower in place. Now that we know what we're going to be mounting in the case, we can start modifying the previous design to fit the SSD shield underneath the Pi. Now we've got the case done, so let's print it out in black PLA with a 15% infill. We'll need to print it on its side and add some supports to the front for the ports. We'll need to clean up the case and remove the supports before putting our pie into it. Last time I put the Pi in before the display, but it's actually easier to put the display in first, so let's do that. I'm using a small I2C OLED display, which is perfect to be driven straight from the GPI opens. Make a note of your pin labels before installing the display, as they'll be hidden once it's in place. There are also two different versions of these displays online, and they have different VCC and ground pins, so don't just copy my wiring because you might damage your display. Slide the top edge of the display under the clips in the case and then use the 3D principal bracket and screw to hold it in place. Don't screw it down too tightly or you might crack your display. This just needs to gently hold it in position. Push the ribbon cable connectors onto the pins on the back of the display. It doesn't matter which colour goes onto which pin, just make a note of which way around yours are connected. Before putting our Pi into the case, we'll need to install our SSD. I'm using a 128GB drive, as this is just a secondary computer for me. But you can use up to a 2TB drive if you're going to be using yours as a NAS or a media center. You'll also want to configure your Pi to boot from the SSD and flash the operating system image to your SSD before putting it into your case, as you can't get to the SD card to remove it after it's been installed. 
I've recently covered this in another video, so I'll put a card up for that if you need some help. Put the pie into the case and secure it with the small black screws which go through the holes in the base and into the brass standoffs. Now we just need to make our side panels. I'm going to laser cut these from some 2mm clear acrylic. To mount the fan onto the side panels, we need to push four M3 nuts into the pockets on the fan. These enable us to use the existing screws that came with the ice tower to hold the fan in place on the side panel. The nuts sit on the acrylic side of the fan, so the fan is held in place using the press fits on the nuts. The screws don't actually go all the way through the fan. The side panels are each held in place with four M3 by 8 mm screws. Before putting the opposite side panel on, you'll need to connect your display and fan to the GPIO pins. I connected my display to power and the ITC pins and the fan to 5 volts. If you need help with this and programming the display, follow the card to my previous video on how to do this. We can now close up the second side. Lastly, let's plug our USB jumper into the shield in the power. I also 3D printed a small cap to cover the jumper and make it blend in with the case a bit better. Our case is now complete, so we can turn it on and try it out. Mine will work right away, as I've cloned the SD card from a previous project which already had the stats display program to run on startup using CronTab. The display shows your local IP address, which is useful for network related projects, as well as the CPU load, CPU temperature, and memory and disk usage. The Python script is fully customizable, so you can add or remove stats as you'd like, and even integrate stats from other utilities like PyHole or OpenMediaVault. If you'd like to build your own case like this, I'll put links to the 3D print files and to a pre made kit in the video description. Let me know what you think of the case in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.